the D1, D2 pathways need to be in optimal balance. Too much of the D1 and we move towards impulse dysregulation. We know the firing patterns matter. So this will be relevant to the prescribing of medication. Too much D1 stimulation results in cognitive constipation as well or cognitive inflexibility. In children, this excessive D1 stimulation is seen in the form of tics with stimulants, for example. In adults, because the prefrontal cortex has developed and can control the striatum where the tics originate, they have cognitive tic-like phenomenon, cognitive rigidity. They'll come and tell you the stimulants stop working. I can't focus. Obsessive thoughts come up. Obsessive compulsive disorder can come up. Why does that happen? D1, D2. Clozapine triggering off OCD. Remember, clozapine has an optimum D1, D2. Clozapine is a D1 partial agonist. It's the same reason why clozapine can trigger off seizures. So it gives you an idea about how ultimately, by understanding and linking psychopharmacology, we can really balance this. By knowing this, we can treat tardive dyskinesia well. With that basis in mind, ensuring that our prescribing doesn't stimulate too much D1, ensures tonic dopamine release, we're now able to move into the addiction cascade. So when we think about the DSM criteria for substance use disorder, what we can see here is it's really a cascade in a way. We can see that it starts off with excessive or prolonged use, moves towards unsuccessful control efforts, prefrontal cortex losing its control. Then it moves towards the limbic areas taking control, salience. And the word that is used in addiction is also salience, incentive, salience phenomenon. And you can see excessive time is spent on substance related activities. There's craving, which is, if you think about moving from liking to wanting, role obligations neglected, a form of salience, persistent social problems, the impact, the consequence, activities forfeited for use, use in physically hazardous situations. So here we can see that the prefrontal cortex decision making has really moved on. It's like pika, it's all about the primitive brain taking over. Use despite adverse effects. Increase tolerance. Tolerance is nothing but sensitization. Sensitization means that instead of getting the homeostasis achieved, where if I prescribe opioid, pain's relieved, excessive use of opioids will actually result in hyperalgesia over time. That's sensitization. And we'll see that key component play a part in the addiction phenomenon. Finally, withdrawal symptoms also when the substance is taken away. So you can see it's really a cascade, the criteria. And I mentioned the salience network. So I wanna highlight two key aspects. If we want to modulate the salience network in addiction or any other disorder, remember salience is about one or two stimuli taking over an individual's life. In psychosis, that could be hallucinations or delusions. In migraine, that's migrainous pain. Tinnitus, it's the ringing in the ears, whilst in substance use, it's the substance. So salience network, if we need to modulate it, we need to understand the noradrenergic system and ultimately the dopaminergic pathway as well.